I got a haircut. Yay! Go get my haircut. So, can I take a look at this makeup? I mean, I tried. I'm living for it. And uh, I jumped the bag wagon and I'm trying to fit me. It's not cruelty free, but holy crap, it works. All right, let's move on. So today we're going to talk about borderline personality disorder and what it is and whatnot. So there's a reason why. Anybody who knows me personally and has been following my personal page knows that I've been going through a lot these past couple weeks. One from being vandalized and a little bit of freak out on both sides between me and the landlord because we have no idea who or why. Um, that's been settled, you know. So I'm okay. I still have a place to live. But for a while, you know, it was kind of complicated. And then there's the whole thing that I've been going through for the past, what, three days with um, social development. So yeah, I am on disability and there's a whole plethora of reasons that we're not really going to get into, but they calculate things in a different way, in a different manner, and um, it just makes it frustrating that, you know, either I work or not, either way I'm, I'm still in a deficit in a way, but, so that said, we're moving on, we found a solution that, you know, whatever, we'll make it work. Life isn't perfect. Nothing is. All right. So why am I talking about borderline personality disorder? Like the first one, because it's the most complicated one. Well, because that's one of the things that I have. And it was really put to the test in these past two weeks. So that's why I'm deciding to talk about it. The first thing is, what is borderline personality disorder? Most people, when you hear it, thinks that it's multiple personalities. It's not even remotely close to that. And it just has a really, really weird name because they don't have an actual name for it. So they just gave it that one. And it sounds odd and it sounds weird, but... So what borderline personality really is, is people who have it can't necessarily handle their emotions. There's different levels and you know it's a problem in your life where you're like me and when emotions get too high you react badly. You know I've told people where to go how to get there for things that weren't necessarily married. There is no cure. Medication doesn't really, really do much. It's therapy. And the therapy is called DBT, or Dialectical Behavior Therapy. And I'm in that class. And the difference between when I started it in September to now is so amazing, so different. One, other people are noticing. Other people are noticing that, you know, I don't sound as crazy. I, I think more about others and, you know, taking consideration that there might be more than one factor about why somebody answered me, whatever. Or if they don't call me back within five minutes, that, you know, they might be busy. I'm not the center of the universe. So, yes, this therapy works. And another part of it is that we have a support team throughout the whole time and they've been really there for me mostly these past days, you know, call any time. They'll help you with their skills to get through stuff because um, the stuff about, you know, social development, when it's affecting the fact that how am I going to pay my bills because, you know, all sorts of things. I freaked out. I mean, I'm trying to get answers. I'm calling. I'm doing the best that I can. And long story short, you get the runaround until you finally get the answer. It took me about four days. So it was really frustrating. Um, but they were there for me. And I, I reached my edge. I reached my point. But I didn't cross the point. And what that point is for most people with borderline personality disorder, figured out by the woman who invented the dialectical behavior therapy. And her name is Marshall Linehan. You can her up. 
as most people who have borderline personality disorder, when they reach that point that they can't handle things anymore, they usually try to kill themselves or threaten to, or, you know. So what does not being able to handle my emotions mean? It means different things. So it means that one, I can't recognize my own emotions. So if something happens that would be frustrating for somebody else, I am frustrated, but I might think I'm angry or react with anger. So my reaction is not the proper reaction to the emotion I'm feeling because I don't know what emotion I'm actually feeling. So the word triggered is a very particular word and people are overusing it for the wrong reasons. You can be offended, you can be upset, but you're not necessarily triggered. Triggered means that whatever event happened or was said or that you've seen, because it can be many things that can be a trigger, it on the inside makes you feel this rush of emotions that are intense. So just because you look at somebody and you know you don't like their clothes because maybe they're too revealing and you find offense to that doesn't mean you're triggered because it's not making you want to go out and you know smack them in the face and push them down a ditch and I'm not exaggerating when I'm talking about that because people who have borderline personality disorder who are not getting any kind of help whatsoever could possibly react that way because that's the other part is that we rationalize and I mean we as in people that are borderline, we rationalize our actions even though after the fact later on, logically we realize that those actions made no sense. That they were unwarranted way too far, should not have been done, and yes, we are embarrassed and we feel horrible about it. The emotions linger longer than they should. We just stay there. We fuel our own fire and that joke that they say about women, you know, they'll bring up something that happened eight months ago in an argument. Borderlines do that. We'll, we'll bring up something totally irrelevant to, to whatever conversation we're having at the time um, because we're angry about something else, but we're taking it out of the person we're talking now and we'll be like, remember when I was four? And you push me in the mud, you know. I have a short attention span, so so do you. So let's not make these too long. But first, can I mention this shirt? I mean, look, it's totally cute. Um, yeah, my mom got it for me at the hospice restore thing. Yay! So, <clears throat> what causes borderline personality disorder, and how is it different from other personality disorders? So, they're a little bit different. There's more than one personality disorder. The one we hear the most about is, you know, narcissistic personality disorder because we think a certain someone might have it. It doesn't matter. There's a difference between being a narcissist and having a personality disorder, however. <clears throat> and, you know, I want to make this a thing, so I'll explain the other ones later. But when it comes to having borderline personality disorder, you have to be born with a predisposition to mental illness. So yeah, people, shocker, everybody's born with predispositions. Some people are born with a predisposition to be very good at sports. Let's take Sidney Crosby for an example. He's, you know, a natural talent, I guess. I don't watch hockey that much, but I'm, you know, he was born with a predisposition to be really good at hockey. Some people are, you know, born with other things. And then, unfortunately, some people are born with a predisposition to be an addictive person. Um, some people are born with a predisposition to becoming an alcoholic. And why? Some of it is, you know, hereditary. But other than that, they're still not quite entirely sure because, well, they can't just, like, download your brain. They can't look at it. And they're studying, but they don't necessarily know everything. The one thing we do know about borderline personality disorder is that you have to be born with a predisposition to 
having a mental illness because the cause of it and is the sole cause of it. So all those people out there that try to like self-diagnose, please don't, okay? Like if you take those tests and it tells you that you have whatever, if you really think you have that whatever result is, I mean, go see a doctor and get a proper diagnosis. So many things mimic other things and the symptoms are so the same that you might be treating the wrong thing. I'm 35. No, I'm not afraid to admit it. I don't care about numbers. And sometimes I forget how old I am. I have to ask my mom. Anyway, dates and time stuff is, is not my thing at all. But in my whole life, we've been going through the things. Now, it took a long time for things to get diagnosed. That's a story for another day. But they've been treating me for, you know, severe ADHD and anxiety and OCD and all that kind of stuff. And while those are technically true because I, I fit in them, mostly the basis for most of those things comes from the fact that I'm high functioning autistic. Did they know those things back in 1985 when I started school and my mom told them that, you know, I, I had ADG and I should be tested and they answered back with, no, your kid's too smart, she can't be. And, you know, the whole other stuff. No, they, they didn't know that. And they know that now. Now, my doctor has never given me, like, the official diagnosis because he doesn't need to. He can admit that, you know, it's most probably a yes. And at this point in time in my life, adding another name or, you know, isn't going to change how he's going to help me and treat me. But it does answer a lot of things. It answers why I don't like change, why things are out of the way, why I notice patterns and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, so, I mean, is it, in my case, it wasn't hurting anything that we were treating the wrong things, but that was just an example of how a lot of things kind of fit into the same square. So, borderline personality disorder. You're born with a predisposition to mental illness. And then the sole cause of it after that is childhood trauma. That's it. Now, childhood trauma doesn't necessarily equal abuse. All right? Now, of course, any kind of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse does count as trauma, for sure. But this is where a lot of people don't necessarily think that this might be an avenue that they have, why they react the way they do, because they'll think back, well, I had no trauma. Like, I was never beat up. Nobody ever touched me the wrong way. There's other things that can be considered trauma as a child, and you might not realize it. So one of them is bullying. And that's a big problem now, obviously. But it's always been a problem. And when I went to school, I got bullied hardcore. Like, hardcore. Some of them, as adults, have come back and apologized and asked for forgiveness for how they treated me. Sure, I can give you forgiveness, no problem. You were a child, you were a teenager, you were following what everybody else did, you didn't know better. You Now, as a man, you're going to ask for my forgiveness? Heck yeah, that, that takes a strong man to walk up to somebody and admit their faults for them later on. So, definitely, there's a few of you out there, good for you. <clears throat> but other people haven't, and it still touches me to this day a little bit. Thankfully, again, my parents were there to, to, to help me out and you know, give me my values and my boundaries to still be me. But bullying is, is rough. And the fact that, you know, bullying happened, it happened mostly because I acted weird in school. I, I was different. One, I was the smart kid. And I'd like to say they didn't know what to do with gifted kids then. But the fact is, is that they still don't know what to do with gifted kids these days either. Um, mostly not in New Brunswick anyway, because we just don't have that place. We don't have special schools. Um, we used to. Bernice McNaughton used to be one. I was going to transfer to it, and then they decided to change it to a normal school. But, you know, enough about that. So, yeah, so bullying is definitely something. I mean, there's different levels of bullying, but there's also different levels of how everybody 
interprets how it is. Everybody reacts differently. So some people might have gotten half the bullying that I've gotten and have just as much trauma from it. It's all subjective. But yes, bullying can be one. And in my case, you know, I, I acted weird in school and they didn't know what to do with me. And they gave me these weird punishments. And some of those punishments were traumas and they still are to this day. There's a reason I don't wear skirts or dresses. They trigger me, seriously. Um, I would never wear skirts or dresses as a kid because I was a total tomboy, you know, the little girl. But there were certain days when it was like carnival. And we're going to take this for example because it's imprinted in my mind. Second grade, it was carnival day. My mom dressed me up cute with a little skirt outfit, get up. And I go to school and the teachers pull me aside and they're like, you can't go to carnival with all your other friends. You ha you're punished because you don't act well in class. And the whole day I spent locked in a classroom by myself with nothing to do. No, nothing, no games, no books, no nothing. I sat there from like whenever school started at 8.30 in the morning till it was done at like 3.30 with my little peanut butter sandwich because I loved peanut butter and we packed our lunches because it was a small school and we had no cafeteria. But I sat in a room by myself for a whole day. And as an eight-year-old, or seven, how old you were in second grade, I didn't understand why I couldn't go to carnival with all my other friends. And I got I watched them all come home and take the bus with me with all their prizes that they won, and I never got to go, and I didn't know why. So, yeah, for me, that was a trauma. And it could be for other people, so it doesn't necessarily have to be abuse. And then there's the obvious one of growing up with addicted parents. Either they're, you know, absent and not there. Or maybe they're not addicted to anything. They're just absent. Because um, that's also a thing that happened in my life. I'm over that though now. Um, you know, like when your parents are not necessarily always around, you tend to either be the one that takes care of your younger siblings. Or you take care of your parent. You know, that can be a trauma. Uh, but it can also not be a trauma. Because if you're... Going through the, those situations, all the ones I just mentioned that could be trauma, and you happen to be the type of person that was not born with a predisposition to mental illness, it's very possible that you will be able to deal with that trauma and grow up and move on to be a perfectly functioning human being in society and move on to do great things and, you know, rule the world. So two people can go through the exact same situations. And if one was born with a predisposition, it's possible that they'll develop borderline personality disorder and the other one won't. They don't know. Um, but those are just factors. But I'm just saying that the not my child thing happens. And just because your child is different, because technically we should all be different. We're not supposed to be mass zombies who follow people doesn't mean they have something wrong with them. Just because your child, you know, fidgets around a lot, and the teacher sent you a note saying that they fidget around a lot, doesn't mean that they have ADHD or, or whatever. You know, a, an eight-year-old isn't meant to sit in one spot and not move for six hours. They gotta do something. And now that we're all inclusive and everybody's at different levels, that's a whole other story, but I'm just simply trying to say, like, don't label your child as having some kind of mental illness just because they don't necessarily fit in. Being different, being an individual, being yourself, doesn't equal being mentally ill. You might not understand why they want to be goth. Like, let's just take that for an example. Or pastel goth, which is like the cutest thing ever. That doesn't mean they're weird or crazy or need to be seen by a psychiatrist. It just means that that's what they like particularly and that's their personality and maybe we should just let people be who they are. So there's people out there who aren't diagnosed. There's people out there who aren't necessarily borderline personality disorder, but they still have a hard time with things because this is how society works these days with everybody special and no kid left behind. and. Nobody knows where they fit in and it's other people are having a hard time. 
So for me right now, this is where I'm sitting at. So I've, I've learned all these skills and I'm getting a lot better at communicating. I'm not perfect. I never will be because this isn't a cure. It's skills that I'm going to have to fall back on for the rest of my life if I want to stay at this place and, you know, have a normal life and interactions with people. But then I have to learn that other people might not necessarily be emotionally stable when I'm talking to them, you know, and they don't necessarily have any kind of mental illness, you know, they might be going through something or they just might be stuck in that rut of they grew up being told they were special and they could go out and change the world and do anything and they, they get out there and they're just, you know, one person amongst another million just the same and they don't understand why they're no longer special and they're no longer number one. So now I have those skills and I can put them in place and interact better and I have more respect for myself. I like who I am better. I feel better about me. I have more self-esteem, which all those things put together make you just happier and things are better and, and you know, it's totally positive all the way around. So, But it's so physically hard. To be stuck in those horrible emotions for like days at a time. So, I have a conclusion. But first, can we talk about my makeup? Like, I'm so living for this. Do I get the light? Now the light keeps changing because it doesn't know if it's going to rain, be sunny, or cloudy. But like, let's just forget those big pops of blue that everybody's talking about in those mauve colors. And let's just go with gold or copper and cranberry like let's make this the new thing and if anybody wants to know what's on my lips it's um this elf topper it's amazing yes most of my stuff is elf cruelty free um i got a bunch of points cash them all in and um yeah most of that stuff was good price and um yeah again the maybelline fit me I'm sorry this isn't cruelty free, but holy crap, does it ever work. It's amazing. I understand why everybody raves about it. But don't tell anybody, okay? Like, don't tell Kat Von D, because I'm so in love with her, and uh, she's hardcore vegan. So, <clears throat> conclusion. Can you live a normal life if you have borderline personality disorder? Yeah, you can. Definitely. You have to have the therapy, though. Now, before... I started DBT, which was in September. My life was, you know, semi-okay. I mean, I, I wasn't that off. Mostly because some of the skills I'm learning, I kind of had figured out through different kinds of other therapies before. So, you know, I wasn't exactly starting at zero. And most people aren't anyway. But, yes, you can live a total normal life. The underlying symptoms are always going to be there. Like I said before, this is a lifelong thing. I'm learning these skills and I'm going to have to keep them in practice and keep rereading my book with all my skills and all my notes for the rest of my life because it's never going to go away. You can't cure mental illness. You can just learn to adapt, learn to live with it, learn to control it, learn to manage it. But it's still, you know, sometimes going to be under there. But... I have all the confidence in the world that my life is going to go in many positive directions. Because like I said, before I notice the difference in myself, I feel better about myself. And everybody else that's around me has also noticed um, a difference. And when I say difference, I mean like a very big noticeable difference. And I'm super happy. I'm thankful that, you know, I get this chance. A lot of people are signing up for this this class and, you know, you have to be chosen and ready to actually want. Like I said, you have to want it. Um, it's everyday group. Sorry. It's a group setting once a week, every week for like eight months. And we have a sh closed down version because the real version is three years. But you have every afternoon once a week. In a group setting, when you have to do homework, you have to talk about it. You have to talk about the feelings, you have to talk about the stuff. And then you have, at once a week or twice or every two weeks, personal therapy and to talk about how you're working on things and where you're getting snafus 
And again, thankfully, they have a system of the three therapists that are all there to answer when you're freaking out like I did for the past couple days. And they were really there enforcing and reminding me that I have the skills. I just have to put them in play. And as much as I lost my shit on several occasions, I still didn't lose it like I would have before. It still wasn't a catastrophe loss. I lost my shit while I was talking to the few people who do understand that I had had enough. I didn't lose it publicly in front of people, you know. So, yes, the skills are definitely, definitely helping. And we figured out a solution. It's, it's not the best solution, but it is a solution that will work. And again, thankfully, because my mother is there to help me out. Is she there to pay my bills? No, which they suggested she should do. And am I returning anything that I bought to a store to get money to pay for groceries? No, I still don't understand. Oh, I don't. What? So that is roughly in a nutshell. BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder. No, we don't eat people. We don't have more than one personality. We're not violent, usually. We're violent towards ourselves, unfortunately. But it can be helped. And sometimes the therapy has to be done more than once before it'll really kick in. Or sometimes you need a refresher after like 10 years. But that's not a big deal because the therapy works. I know. I'm saying things that you guys don't want to hear. Therapy works. I know. It sucks, doesn't it? But it's true. I would not be here. I would not be able to have a life worth living if I hadn't decided to give therapy a try and let it work. It sounds like the most bananas things ever sometimes when they make you do stuff. But guess what? For some weird reason, it works. I don't know it, but there's method to that madness. And I'm going to keep going with it because I'm telling you, I'm here today, and I think if I calculate correctly, like 12 years ago, I was in a special care home. Yeah, I was that not able to process anything that I didn't talk, I didn't go anywhere. I mean, I talked, but I mean, not really. I had no opinion. I didn't do anything. Okay. Me had no opinion. On anything I did what I was told like a robot because I was that there and I went with therapy and here I am today the annoying little person you see now that you also love to death because I'm cute because I mean look at me I did a good job on this makeup yeah I will listen in the description below everything that's on my face because, um, drugstore. Yeah, you don't need no fancy schmancy stuff. Drugstore. So, um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, but yeah, have a great day. Enjoy stuff. Ask questions. Love each other. Bye.